you you can't make a cartoon version of the past if you see what's done in spain and italy wonderful new pieces are added but very of high integrity and they complement the old you've all seen that it's very sad the state of heritage here because people aren't allowed to do that they've got some committee <laughs> what did this chap call them yesterday idiots who that that CNR Rao. No, I just feel they should think about it because you do need to make some statement about this generation, about the India which existed today. But it's still very austere because that's what Gandhiji's life was. And because of the openness, of course, villagers and all feel very free. They won't have to push open a glass door. So this openness, this open to sky space is very, very important. Now, this is a, a very important idea, nothing to do with me. It's the mandala. When we talk about architecture as a metaphor, this is incredible that the city of Jaipur is itself a metaphor for the cosmos, the very plan of it. As you know, a mandala consists, this is the mandala of 81 squares and, and, and uh, 64, etc. But it consists of uh, all the, and then the center is that is where you have a Brahman, where, where, your, where your soul goes after all moksha. And this fellow, as you know, I mean, many scholars think, so I don't know, I'm not a scholar, that he took the Naugraha, the nine planets, because he was fascinated by the sky. He's the man who built Jantar Mantar. So, and then he took the nine planets and he put it as a city, and then because of a hill, he had to move one planet here. And he kept this for his own, um, what you call it, palace. I thought it was wonderful, you know, that here you're, you're starting a city which is very modern. It's a brilliant city for its time. Yet he has a way of looking back and saying, what can that inform me? Without compromising what he wanted to do. To me, he's the first modern Indian. You know, we should really go back, some scholars should go find out more about him. So when I had to do an um, arts memorial, arts, arts center for Nehru, I thought, well, this is Nehru's predecessor. And I took that same nine squares, except I took this square and pulled it, so you can enter. And by pulling this across, we got access here to the library guru. And then I, I matched each, um, each planet's qualities to something that, it's, it was a government building, it had, nothing, it had nothing to do with anything ambitious. I don't think they understood what I was doing. I, you know, the most they ask you, a client usually asks, where's my room? And he was a man, he's the chairman, he says, is there a bathroom attached? <laughs> really, I'm serious. If, you, if you're smart enough to do that, you'll get away with this. Not working. No, it's working. So anyway, but th pulling this aside, which is a very contemporary thing to do, gave me access to the mandala. If it had been closed, I wouldn't have been able to design it. It's like rigor mortis. I hate that kind of dead <laughs> symmetry in two directions. It's one thing. Anyway, that's what happened. Now, what actually happened, of course, is that you get the planets stacked up one against the other in, in a mandala. And when you look through, you're looking through the center one, which it has to be empty, as I said, that's Brahman. See the way that you connect them? They're thick walls, and then you only have 10 foot by 3 meters by 3 meters opening, and the, the thing itself is 100 feet, 30 meters each planet. So when you look through, you're seeing through several planets. That's a completely different spatial organization than from a conventional, large, monumental public building, which we've done like Vidhan Sabha in, in um, Vidhan Bhava in Bhopal. There you put big rooms and small rooms as antechambers and a big one. But I saw that the mandala had a completely different, I said, I must try that. And because it was Nehru, it was a natural good thing to do. What I did find, and I think this chap uh, Gautam Bhatia has written on this on his own. He said, if you really, in, in any particular, um, uh, planet, you're disoriented. What gives you orientation is a glimpse of that empty center. So that made me realize that the, it's not just words. 
the, the mandala actually was through experience. People understood that an empty space, like a courtyard in the middle of a, build, of a house, and that's in every culture. And this is in, the, in, a, in a mandala, it's a much more serious version of that. These things actually work. So that's the center which is empty, which acted as a, the stones, people. Go. This is the entrance to it. This is the first planet, which is Mangal of Pa. We put the director there, which was a mistake. He was a government director and he gave a lot of trouble. But th this is a nice thing. This is a, this is a giant cosmograph, which these were all painted by traditional artists whom Jyotindra got to do the painting. And they were chosen. The symbols and all were chosen by someone called Manu, Manu Desai. Do you know him at all? You should think about He's a wonderful man who was a graphic artist. He had gone to America maybe a little earlier than I did, in the 40s, and he went and studied at Cranbrook. So his work was absolutely contemporary, but his interest went all the way back. So when he heard I was doing this building, he came, I knew him, and he said, look, can I help? And he was wonderful. And then with Jyotindra, they chose the actual, for instance, th this is Kate, uh, the, the mythic image in Ketu is of, of uh, Krishna. That's the size of a person. So they, they, they had a lot of fun doing that. Now, I'm just showing you these two things. They had nothing to do with my building. But to tell you how beautiful, actually, is our history. These are the nine planets with their auspicious colors as a gouache. I don't think Matisse is at his best, and he's a wonderful painter, but I think he would admire this very much. And this, of course, I think, this is Surya Vanshi, I think, the seven symbols in Udaipur, I saw it. So we use those auspicious colors for each planet, but interpret them, use those colors, because it's a contemporary building. It's nothing to do with, with the, in that sense, it's, when I finished it, they, someone said, oh, you're getting votes for the BJP. It's got nothing to do with the BJP. I was, I, I was trying, this, this is Guru. You can see that. It's a completely contemporary image. But it's based on very old, like, 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 the, like the Kund in, in, um, in Modera. This is the building from the outside. I really like it very much because these are the nine planets and they all got their symbols. And... Um, for this thing, you know, in the old days, they used to put cloth and bamboo, see the size of a building. And I didn't know whether we should make it uh, 30 meters per side or 27. So they actually made with bamboos. And we went there because as a model of the cosmos, it has to be autonomous. It must have the gravitas of something that relates to the sky and not just to some neighbors. No. Just one last thing I wanted to point out before we get to Champalimo. I've also been very moved, very, very moved by the brilliance of what people invent, what you may call, well, for housing especially, in all the, in all the villages and stuff and cities and towns, everywhere in the world. This is the, some uh, housing in, uh, houses in, in Hyderabad, Sindh. You know, it's a dry heat, and this, these people have made these hoods which catch the breeze. It's so strong, those loos, that it's driven down into the basement where it's kept in a room full of water, and then it comes up into the house. It's really incredible. You know, Corbusier said a, ho is a house is a machine for living, but he never built something as evocative as this. It's really incredible. And the whole city, to my mind, this is the whole city, it looks like something out of National Geographic, you know? All those little, little birds waiting to be fed. All these beaks open. It's wonderfully evocative. So my early work and the Champalimo Center to some extent is influenced by that. It had to do with creating form, which by its very nature, this is some low cost housing, which was just a tube house, just 10 feet wide and no doors or windows. You could control everything through louvers, etc. I wouldn't stop on that. Then Hindustan Lever Pavilion in 61, where I was trying to see what would happen if you tried to get the air out through natural flow. Although this kind of architecture has become very a la mode about 10 years ago, but we did this long ago and nothing to do being a la mode. It was just came out of the, the problem. 
This was a house for a rich mill owner, Ramakrishna. We used the same principles as that tube house, and it's, it was a very nice house. And it had these courtyards, you can see what it is, and it had this top lighting and the fans, and that's as you went through it. So you could control all that. And then, of course, you all know Kanchenjunga, which is again based on, oh man, it's based on the idea of the uh, through ventilation and, and the way the levels work and the sliding panels that you can cut something off. So I think dealing with the environment, dealing with energy is much more than building a glass tower and then using low E glass to get a LEED certificate. If you look at the old architecture, it, the very shape of the building created that. And that was one of the great stimulants to the architect's imagination. And this was true also in the Alhambra in Spain. It's true everywhere in the world. It's, it's dealing with climate. That's one of the biggest. Here, this is, in, this is looking across the city. That's the building. Well, now we come at last to Shambhani Mo Center. Um, I'd done a building at MIT. I didn't know these people at all. But I'd done a building at, um, at MIT. It was a brain research. And these people wrote, and they phoned, and then they came out, and I met them at MIT. I didn't know who they were, but they are wonderful people. I'll talk about the importance of the client. The client has to, you have to build a bridge, because architecture, like, like painting, is a, is a risk. It's not a very safe thing. If you go to Corbusier, you don't know what you'll get. Maybe unusable. And so you need a client who wants to be on the cutting edge. And what worked very well for us in India in the 60s was wonderful clients like, like I think, well, uh, Pupul Jaika, Gautam and Gira Sarabhai, uh, Kasturbhai Lalbhai. These are all people who wanted to be on the cutting edge. And if you look at the history of the 19th or 20th century in Europe, you'll find the same in painting and architecture. That is what has gone out. Today, you've got market forces run by people who have no idea. All they want to do is make a profit. The last thing they want to be on the cutting edge of anything except the profit. They never see any other aspect that is quite different. And I think that allowed architects of my generation to grow. And I really feel that is something we should do. Because no building is better than the client who commissions it. Well, anyway. This was the this was the site. This is the site. This is the river. When they told me they have a site on that river and just at that point where Vasco de Gama left for India, I'd seen it and I thought that's a wonderful place to do a building. Now when I got there, it was raining and the site was locked. So I had to walk in the evening and I had to walk along here with the with the client. And I was trying to see where the river becomes the ocean. And all the time, Jean would tell you, he kept telling me, just around the corner, just around. And we never found it because it was raining. So that's like what it was. But I'm very lucky I didn't get to see it because I went to sleep that night. I felt I must do something which connects the point of entry with that unknown. Because it's very, very important that the courage you need to go into the unknown, which is really what we talk about people, this research and cancer and brain disease. It's tremendous adventure for the people, the doctors, the scientists, the patients. So uh, my first thing was this, but in the, in the 15 minutes I realized that's not going to work because on this side there's already a curved, what in earth is happening here? Anyway, uh, you see that curved wall, that curved walk, there, there is no, uh, what is that? No. Oh, yeah, this one's come back. <laughs> <laughs> Life in the mysterious Orient. But anyway, <laughs> this is the curve. And you can't, this is a public space. We want to make this a public space. So I said we should have three walls. And then you get, of course, a connection. And that's what the project is. The buildings are behind that wall. And there's a glass bridge connecting them. The third building, the Unit C, 
is a small amphitheater which is given to the city to use. But also all this public space was given back to the city. We've used less than 50% of the site. And again, the client backed me on that. I said, it's too important a site to make it your foundation. And it was very good because when they started construction, of course, lots of NGOs came around. But they were disarmed and they were told, you've now got a site which celebrates the history before it was just rubbish and nothing there. So that's, that's what the three buildings look like. And that's the entrance and that, that's the way you come in and go there. And I'll just show you a fly through. There's the ocean out there. What's very nice in simulation, we don't design on the computer, but it's very useful for doing things like this so that you can check and also the client can understand what, the, what you're trying to do. So now all the spaces of the building are lit, lit through different gardens, very much like the Alhambra. From the outside, you see these walls. But on the inside, it's a quite a different world. So it does, this building doesn't look like the Alhambra, but the principle is the same. That's very important to my mind. You use the same principle, perhaps, but you reinvent its expression. Now we've come out between the two buildings. There's the glass bridge. And now we're walking up towards the ocean. And I felt this is into the unknown. So I sloped this thing. I put the parking under. Because I feel you must see the sky, you mustn't see water. The sky is the real unknown, not water. When you come to the end, you see water, and then you see an enigmatic object, which might be an island or whatever, a Portuguese man of war, whatever it is, but it's what you came in search of. And then th this is all the laboratories and the, the research, etc. That's looking back. Yeah, you can see some of the gardens and how they're placed. This is the, the uh, service area, but the service area also is part of the sculpture. I think, I think architecture is sculpture, but with the gestures of human occupation. It's not just stupid abstract sculpture. No, it's got to do, if you look at a great house by Frank Lloyd Wright, the windows don't make it less sculptural, make it more so. The openings, the shadows. This is the glass bridge, done by a German engineer, brilliant man. It got, so now here, here, are the, here are the plans and you can see the, the different buildings and the stuff. And then of course all the studies we had to make to try and understand what would be the way and what would you look at. And that's where Google Earth comes in very useful because you can zoom in seriously. Then you can see what happens across the, the river and what view you would get. And of course even from those openings. And then the building starts to go up. This whole thing was done in three and a half years including construction. And it's a huge thing. It's twice as big as the MIT building. But because of this very good trusting relationship between the architects and the clients and everyone else, the doctors, it's very, very important. See, an architect, I think Monica is weaving, and once Akbar was telling her, Akbar Padamsi, the painter, he said, you know, when you paint, you want to make a, a curve. Then you don't like it, you erase it. He said, you can't do that in weaving. <laughs> It's true, you have to rip it all out and go back. So that gesture, spontaneous gesture, how do you make it? Because you can't get it wrong. And in, in architecture, of course, it's to do it at the right scale. And, and when I saw this going up, I said, well, at least we got the scale right. So th this is that space down the center. And there's going towards the river. And this is what we're trying to make out of it trying to give it definition, shape, and, and drama. I'll just go fast through these things. You can, And the whole thing is like, I think it's like cheese, you know, and you just chop it with a very sharp knife, scalpel. We also put the stones, only use flat stones. And when it was more of a curve, we use them shorter, because I love the way stones, when they're not curved, 
they reflect the sun and all unevenly. This is from the entrance side. This is looking into this garden, which hopefully will become a Brazilian rainforest. This is right at the begin beginning. This is the entrance to the building. This is both buildings with the bridge between them. And uh, just this curve is enough to give you the protection you need for arrival. You don't have to have a, a column with a porch or anything like that. It's all that's looking through from 